You know, ladies and gentlemen, we look at entertainment history in many different ways. Now, there's always going to be an actor or a character that stands out in a big movie, and one of them was Slapshot. Now, Paul D'Amato stood out for a lot of people because he played the infamous Dr. Hook in the movie Slapshot with Paul Newman, the antithesis of the whole movie. He made the plot go. But uh, the history of this actor which also led to him being the basis for Wolverine, the X-Men uh, comic book character, is c quite bizarre. Now, born in Worcester, Massachusetts, he began working as a stagehand at the age of 14 and decided at the age of 21 that he wanted to become an actor. He eventually attended Emerson College, where he appeared in school productions and also played on a school ice hockey team. In 74, he moved to Montpelier, Vermont, and acted in a local theater ensemble. He was well-reviewed as one of the three prisoners in the 1975 stage production of the Jean uh, Genet play Death Watch. Now, D'Amato's combination of acting experience and ice hockey experience put him in contention for a major role in the 1977 film Slapshot, in which he obviously uh, wound up appearing as a main antagonist. He thereafter appeared in films including The Deadliest Season, 1977, The Deer Hunter, Firepower, and Heaven's Gate. Now, his appearance in Slapshot served as the basis of artist John Byrne's rendition of the comic book character Wolverine. Now, in the Slapshot movie, he's basically kind of your typical Canadian goon with the, the ability to score. And he stands out because that character really existed from the mid-1970s well in the 1990s and 2000s. Now, D'Amato was, wasn't just a one-trick pony. He also had a stage career, appearing in a Vermont production of Shakespeare's Persley's uh, Prince of Tyre in 1980. In the 1980s, he was also typically cast as a thug of or henchman. In a 1983 pilot for the TV series Murder, Inc., his character assaulted a character played by Ellen Barkin, and in the 87 film Suspect, he held a razor to Cher's throat and stabbed Dennis Quaid. In the 1990s and 2000s, he appeared as different characters in multiple episodes of Law & Order and Law & Order Criminal Intent. Now, he continued to make public appearances in the 2010s, mostly evoking his appearance in Slapshot. Now, in November 2010, he D'Amato dropped the ceremonial first puck at a hockey game between the Danbury Whalers and the Broome County uh, Barons. In July 2012... He came out for an ice skating event to raise funds for uh, Hope Lodge in Worcester. In August 2017, he participated in a reunion of members of the Slapshot cast in Winnipeg for a golf tournament commemorating the 40th anniversary of the film. By 2019, he was working as a boot fitter in a Vermont ski shop, which facilitated his own skiing hobby. Now, in the mid-1970s, he married Bertine Colomb, Colombo of Montpelier, who he met while attending adjacent colleges. In 2009, he was engaged to uh, one Marina Ray. Now, what stands out for me in Slapshot, because a lot of people have uh, looked at this movie, but I think he only had 15 or 20 lines in, a, in the whole movie, but he played the character so well because, uh, just like the goon in, uh, in Youngblood, which is a kind of the son of this type of character. Uh, the, the, he's famous lines with Paul Newman before one of the key games, and he's a uh, he's, uh, terminology on the ice. Without him as a major character in that movie and playing this is so well, I don't think Slapshot would have been as successful. Because when it comes down to it, you need to play a good villain to be make a, a comedy violence movie uh, go forward and he played a villain but it was comedy violence it wasn't as intense as the other parts he did but for me uh, he should have got some kind of recognition as uh, not say supporting actor nomination but without him in the movie I don't think the movie would have been successful because he was the uh, he was the antithesis of uh, the the teams that were against the Chiefs and their success to try to stay alive using goon tactics to keep on going so again but did he get any money for being used as the appearance for Wolverine? I don't know. And he's, is, if his face is public domain, you can't sue for being what you look like because, you know, uh, people have done me a cartoon uh, form before and they didn't make any money off it. It was, it was a, a 70s uh, Sabres fan did it. She not there to make the money. She was saying, hey, I'd like to see you, your your face and your, your hair and your visage in this kind of cartoon. But in here, 
pretty weird because you look at the early Wolverine there he's changed a lot through the years uh, the, uh, the Mc, uh, Dr. Hook or McCracken there he looks like an evil Canadian hockey player and that's what he played so ladies and gentlemen this is our latest in our podcast series on Slapshot if you like what we're doing here with our uh, pro Slapshot <laughs> podcast let us know with a like comment and subscribe thanks for listening bye